1994, the CCDs, these charge couple devices, became 2048 by 2048, or 4 megapixels. So that's like the size of many cameras we're used to today. And that enabled us to put these detectors on telescopes and discover these very bright supernovae way across the universe. They're very rare. And so before, if you had a tiny little detector, you'd look and you just wouldn't see anything because the chances of there being an exploding star in this tiny little piece of sky were almost zero. So, in 1994, uh, one of the Chilean group, Mario Hemley, visited me and my colleagues at Harvard, showed me their first measurements of distances with the supernovae, and about three weeks later, a group out of Berkeley, led by Saul Perlmutter, told us about a discovery. Now, they had done this many times before, probably you too where they said, we have a discovery, we went and looked at it, and normally there was nothing there. This time we looked, and there was something there. And it was a supernova that was about four billion years in the past. That was quite a revelation. We found out later they had discovered seven of them. They had been waiting, they had been working for six years to do this. But it was in 1994, they suddenly got the big detectors, and that made all the difference. And so those things, those two things came together. I was young, just finishing my PhD, I was 27 years old. And when I saw this, I dropped everything that I had been doing, and I started working on the program of the High Redshift Superdome uh, program. So, how does this end up? Well, we made our measurement because it had become possible. It was technologically possible. That is, I was born at exactly the right time. On the other hand, I did have the initiative to drop everything I did and carry out a three-year program. So I did hard work, and many, many people could have done that with the right initiative uh, and being put in that place. But other people had the opportunity. They just didn't. Uh, and then, of course, we were measuring something, which was the ultimate fate of the universe. Was the universe slowing down a little bit, or was it slowing down a lot? But, of course, what we found was not that the universe was slowing down at all. It was speeding up. Now, if the universe had just been slowing down a little bit or a lot, we would have learned this big thing about the universe. Does it exist forever? Or, but we wouldn't have won the Nobel Prize. It was because the universe was doing something we didn't expect that we made this discovery. And almost all Nobel Prizes are like that. They are unexpected uh, events where people typically have done very good work, but they have happened upon something surprising. There are some Nobel Prizes which are typically to theorists. There aren't very many theorist prizes for people just being very, very smart. So, you know, Richard Feynman, Enrico Fermi, these guys won Nobel Prizes because they really were smart. And there was not a matter of being born at the right time for them. They were going to win one no matter what. My prize was more about being at the right time, and most of them are like that. <laughs> we, are, we are very sorry with that. Do not completely agree with you. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Next one. Mm, I, I want to change. Uh,